Hi everyone and welcome back to the sixth part of this video series on wall model LES. And today's episode is all about algebraic wall stress models. All right, so in order to arrive to an algebraic wall stress model, we're going to start with the ODE formulation here. Uh, you might want to recall that this Fi is the effect of uh, pressure gradient plus the effect of uh, acceleration term. So what we did for ODE models is we said, okay, we can integrate this once in the wall normal direction, and then we arrive to this equation where we have uh, wall shear stress as a term. And here's where the paths for the ODE on the, and the algebraic wall models, they diverge. So for ODE models, we said, all right, we're going to integrate this one more time, but we're going to do this numerically, and we're going to integrate from zero to H, right? And this way we get, got an explicit expression for tau wall uh, for which we need to compute two integrals numerically, basically. Now, for wall stress models, which are algebraic, we instead uh, say like this. So assume that this ODE is actually solvable. So we can analytically solve this, right? So we have some nice new T, etc., etc. So we're actually in a position to integrate this once more analytically and not numerically. Uh, then we actually solve for this U, right? And uh, in the end, we will get some kind of uh, function of X2 and the tau wall which gives us the distribution of velocity across um, the inner layer. So such expressions are usually written in uh, inner units, so in plus units, uh, so like u plus versus y plus. In our notation, it would be maybe a bit better to write x2 plus, since x2 is a wall normal coordinate, but uh, y is, and, or rather y plus is so commonly used that I've decided, okay, let's just use y plus here as well. And let's keep in mind it's the same as x2 plus. It, it, it won't bother us uh, all that much. Uh, so typically these type of expressions, u plus versus y plus, they are called laws of the wall. And uh, law here is, is in, in quotation marks because uh, it's usually it's an approximation rather, uh, not uh, actual law. Uh, and uh, what we need to realize is that you don't necessarily need to start from an ODE formulation to, to arrive to such a law. Uh, the reason why we went this way here is because I wanted to create this nice connection from PDE wall models, which solve the full Rance equations. Then we introduced some simplifications. We arrived in an ODE model, and then we can do even more approximations and simplifications, let's say. And then we actually say we can integrate the ODE and we get an algebraic wall model. Okay, but uh, we don't need to actually do that in order to develop an algebraic wall model. Uh, instead, uh, I would say what was typically done, at least in the beginning, is that uh, you look at this u plus versus y plus um, uh, profile from experimental or numerical results, for example, from DNS, uh, and you try to seek uh, some kind of relationship which approximates it well. And one thing we want to note here is that these are the same things which are known as wall functions in RANS, right? So. These will be familiar for most of you listening to this, I think. So this is really nothing new. We use these type of relationships in RANS modeling as well. Okay, so why not uh, come back to where we sort of started this video series and uh, look at how uh, the velocity profile looks in the boundary layer again. So here we have it in outer and inner coordinates. And actually just from this profile, we can already say what the simplest uh, algebraic wall model is. Because in this profile, we have uh, two regions where we actually have a real law, not an approximation. Uh, and one is uh, here in the viscous sublayer where simply u plus is equal to y plus. So this is known. And then we have the log law, right? Which is the, the line here. Uh, and that is also a physical law. So not just some approximation. And it looks like this. Then one can discuss what uh, these constants are and what they should be. And that's, I guess, an ongoing... Uh, uh, well, research on to calibrate them perfectly, and there's Reynolds number effects and so on and so forth uh, in the low Reynolds number region. Uh, but we can say that maybe for at some at some Reynolds number and above, these become constant, and we our job is to determine them as researchers at some point. And already we have very good uh, ideas about what values we can choose. So this is actually a real law, right? So this is basically the simplest uh, uh, wall function we can use. Uh, so, um, let's see how it works in practice, really. So, there, there are three steps to this. Um, and the first step is the same as for all the other wall models. And that is that you sample your LES solution at some distance from the wall, right? So, you grab uh, some data. And in particular, for the log law, what we need to grab 
is the velocity value. And then what you do is you plug in that data into the law of the wall, and as we will see shortly, you end up with an equation from which you can solve for tau wall. So let's just take a concrete example, right? So we, we take some kind of boundary layer, which we say is one meter thick, then we sample from 0.1 meters away from the wall, so about one-tenth of the boundary layer thickness, which is reasonable. And let's say that we sampled uh, one meter per second for the velocity, and that the viscosity of the flow we know is 10 to the power of minus four. Let's settle for some constants for the log loss, so for example, kappa 0.4 and b equal to five. And then if we plug this in into our law and explicitly write out what u plus and y plus is, we get u over u tau, that's u plus, equals to one over kappa, so 0.4, and then the log of u plus, y plus, sorry, so that's y times u tau and then over nu, right? And plus b, so plus five. What remains is now to plug in the sample data, so this is step two. So what we sampled is that the velocity is one meter per second, so that goes in here. So on the left-hand side, we have one over u tau, and then uh, y uh, becomes uh, our sampling distance, h, which we said is 0.1 meters. So we plug that in here. And finally, the viscosity, 10 to the power minus four. Uh, so what we see now is that the only unknown left in this equation is u tau, right? So this is now step three. So we have to solve the resulting equation with respect to tau wall or u, y, u tau, which is equivalent. And uh, we see that, that, yeah, in fact, that's the only unknown left. So we have this algebraic equation, which we have to solve some, somehow. And uh, yeah, what we can employ is one of the many uh, different uh, solvers for algebraic nonlinear equations. Perhaps the, no, the go-to approach is just to use Newton's method. Uh, and then we get our u tau approximation. All right, so this is how the whole process works. So I hope there is nothing uh, hidden anymore. So what are some of the other algebraic wall models besides for this uh, log law? So there are several models which are equilibrium, meaning that they don't account for the pressure gradient and uh, acceleration term, uh, which sort of build on the log law somehow. So two examples of this is Reichardt's law and Spalding's law. And the idea with these two is that they cover the log law, but they also cover what is beneath it. So you get sort of an approximation of, uh, of the whole profile from the wall and up to the end of the log law. The good thing about that is that, for example, if there's some, well, some kind of complicated flow and you don't really know how to set the sampling point, it may be so that you're closer to the wall than the log law, and then it's good that your uh, wall model still is sort of applicable. Uh, so here's a picture of this is Spalding's law uh, versus DNS. So the blue line is a DNS of, a, uh, I think this is channel flow. Uh, and then the orange line is the Spalding law. So you can see that it's exactly straight here, approximating the log law. And then it connects somehow to this linear region where it's, of course, exact. Um, so yeah, it's a pretty good approximation, right? Reichardt's law is pretty much the same thing. Um, then we have a Werner Wengel model, uh, which is a bit special, but I, I want to mention it because it's been used in several papers. And here it actually doesn't assume a log law. Instead, we say that it's a power law. And that's uh, something that has been in the literature also for a long time. Uh, so power laws instead of log law uh, for the velocity profile. I think there's this one seventh power law, for example. Um, and also the good thing about this model is that it is explicit. So you actually don't arrive to an equation for uh, u tau, rather you arrive to an expression for u tau. You just have to plug in the numbers and you're done. So that's uh, actually quite nice. Um, and then there are several models which try to account for the so-called non-equilibrium effects, right? So the pressure gradient and the, and the um, acceleration. And there are several of them. So here's a list of uh, three different ones. So Xi's law, Afzal's law, and Nichols law. So uh, there's some stuff to choose from. So here's some pointers to the literature regarding the laws we just discussed. We have Reichardt first, 1951. Unfortunately, you have to brush up your German for this one. Uh, then there's Spalding, 10 years later, 1961, a single formula for the law of the wall. Then there's Werner Wengel, 30 years later, 1991, Nichols and Xi, the one that uh, introduced the pressure gradient inference, influence, uh, 2003 and 2004. Uh, I think that Xi one is actually originally in a 1999 report from uh, NASA, but uh, this is just a more modern publication in which you can find the, uh, the relevant information. I also wanted to include some more modern developments here for those who are interested and want to look at what's sort of uh, developed right now. 
the first paper here is from 2015 uh, by Young and colleagues, a uh, very interesting paper about an integral wall model. And uh, here what they do is that they assume a particular velocity profile, but they say that the coefficients in this profile are going to be dynamically solved for, adjusting for different uh, physical flow conditions. Uh, a very interesting approach. You can take a look uh, if you follow this link. Uh, then we have a very fresh paper, 2019, from a um, Japanese group, uh, Suga and colleagues, and also an algebraic non-equilibrium wall stress modeling. So um, you can take a look here, and I believe uh, they actually start with an ODE formulation here and then uh, perform the integration. So just like we discussed in the beginning of the video. And finally, the last paper, a very, very fresh, 2020, from the group of Pierre Sago, and that's an explicit algebraic wall model for uh, LES, which accounts for the pressure gradient, uh, and verse in particular. Uh, so that's interesting. So this is sort of the same thing as the Werner Wangle, though, in the sense that you get an explicit expression instead of uh, an equation to solve, which is, of course, always nice. Uh, I should say that this is developed in the framework of a lattice Boltzmann uh, solver, but uh, it doesn't really matter. You can still use the wall model uh, in ordinary solver solvers as well. Okay, so let's sum up uh, pros and cons, just like we did for the other types. So one big pro is that it's extremely cheap. Algebraic models do not uh, take up a significant amount of time as compared to the solution to the LLS equations. Uh, usually, this uh, numerical procedure to uh, solve uh, for um, tau wall, it converges after a few iterations, it's very nice. If you use an explicit model, then of course the cost is pretty much zero, right? You just evaluate an expression and you're done. Um, another good thing is that uh, these models are quite well understood, uh, because they're used in RANS as well. So everybody sort of knows what you're talking about. If you refer to such a model, people understand what a wall function is, and that's, that can be nice. I think for the same reason, it can be said that they are also the most widespread. Generally, most of the computations which are done, I think, are still by far the uh, algebraic wall stress models. Uh, now, regarding the cons, so one small con is that uh, this iterative approach, uh, for example, this Newton method, if you use it, it needs uh, some decent initial conditions to start with. Because if you start, for example, with, uh, well, let's say that you start with uh, some constant velocity in the whole domain, uh, which may be, for example, too large uh, compared to what you actually get at the wall. And then you start with a horrible guess for the Newton's method and it uh, diverges or something like that. Uh, that can happen. So, But there is, of course, ways to avoid it. One, one way, for example, which I typically use is that you first run without a wall model, you maybe solve for one flow through time. And uh, by that, you get sort of decent uh, velocity values in your domain, and then you can start uh, the wall model and uh, f things per work pr perfectly fine. But this is just something to be aware of. Um, and then the second con is, well, that most of the classical models that we saw, they are meant for flat walls with no pressure gradients, right? So there are newer developments, but again, here we can return to the discussion that we had for ODU models, and that is whether is it appropriate to actually only have the pressure gradient effects, but not consider the acceleration term? So this is, as I understand it, the same discussion here as it was uh, for the ODE models. All right, uh, so this concludes the section on algebraic wall models. We're very, very close to approaching uh, the practical part uh, where we're going to start looking at such things as how do we mesh and how do we set up the case and things like that. Uh, but we have some things left which I want to discuss. Uh, so the next video is going to be still on theory. And um, I just want to take one video to look at the errors which arise in uh, wall, wall stress modeling and uh, uh, where they come from. And uh, then we will use that information when we discuss the case setup so that we can avoid them. If you want to make sure you don't want to miss the next videos, so go ahead and subscribe to the channel and see you next time. Bye.